Well, I agree with you. That's my experience. And in trying to account for it, uh, you know, you have to look at fungi. Fungi are primary uh, decomposers. That means they can only live on decaying life. That suggests to me that they are, are late evolving, or at least not early evolving. Uh, mushrooms are very soft-bodied, and so are all fungi. There is no record, in, no fossil record of a mushroom older than 40 million years. Well, that's a tiny fraction of the time life has been on the Earth. Now, when I asked a paleontologist about this, he said, well, they're soft-bodied and they don't fossilize easily. But hey, we have flatworms from the Gunflint Church of South Africa, they're 4.3 billion years old. If they left a trace in the fossil record, you'd think there would be more of a trace of mushrooms. If you decondition your presuppositions and just look at the mushroom, uh, it looks to me, number one, as though it is capable of surviving an extraterrestrial environment. In other words, if you have mushroom spores and you want to store them for long-term longevity, you seek an environment as much like outer space as you can find. You store them in liquid nitrogen at minus 200 degrees, and they will last virtually forever. If you look at the color of Stropharia cubensis, Spores, that's in the brown gilled mushroom family, the spores are deep purple, almost black. That's the color you would paint a spacecraft if you wanted to absorb uh, long, long uh, wave radiation. Uh, if you look at the spore, you know, what is it? It's a packet of crystallized DNA. A single mature Stropharia cubensis mushroom, when it's sporulating will shed up to three million spores a minute for up to two weeks. Three million spores a minute for two weeks. Uh, and these things are uh, microscopic, so small that the perturbations and agitation of air molecules, which are called Brownian motion, can actually percolate these things into the outer atmosphere where then uh, energetic cosmic events can actually detach them from the terrestrial medium and they slowly, like planetary dandruff or something, <laughs> drift off into space. Well, uh, I, I, I always, it, it seems so obvious to me, maybe it's because I live in Hawaii, but the most predictable major revolution in biology that you can imagine is, of course, within a few years it will be realized that the Earth is an island, that's all, that the biota that is present here, much of it probably drifted in in cosmic debris. When stars go supernova, planets are destroyed, it, it's a cliché of cosmic consciousness to say, you know, the atoms in your body were once in the hearts of distant stars. Well, if that's true, then some of the atoms in your body were once in the, uh, a part of distant planets, and some vanishingly small fraction may have been part of the biota of extraterrestrial ecosystems. The other thing about the mushroom that's very suggestive to me is it appears to be or, or there is a place, a perspective, from which you can look at it, that it appears to be not an organism, but an artifact. It is incredibly well designed uh, at a very high level of design criteria. For example, on this planet, uh, one of the most advanced ethical systems we've been able to evolve is Buddhism, which teaches vegetarianism. Uh, if a Buddhist could d design their own genome, they would become a fungus because a fungus is a primary decomposer. It's the only caramelous 
place in the entire food chain. There is no karma for the fungi. They don't destroy any life whatsoever. So, so here you have this thing designed to traverse extraterrestrial space, occupying a karmaless niche in the ecosystem, and when complex with a mammalian nervous system, a galactarian archive of historical data becomes accessible. Uh, we have only known about DNA since 1950, less than 50 years, and we're already confidently talking about completely redesigning the human genome and uh, so forth and so on. Well, if we pursue along these lines for 500 years, we will look the way we want to look. And, you know, you, trivially, we may all want to be Keanu Reeves or something, but once the cultural agenda cuts in, uh, if, if, say, Buddhism took over in the presence of an advanced molecular genetics, then we could design ourselves into a karmaless niche in the universe. I, I wish that we could bring, I don't know who it is, but the content of the mushroom experience, which was what launched your question, is so evidently alien and non-human and self-referential to a world we don't know that to me, uh, it would require a, a commission and several years of study to decide that this thing is not an extraterrestrial. Our notions of extraterrestrials to this point have been incredibly self-reflexive. Uh, once you have fully in grasp the size of the universe, and the amount of time that is available, then the idea that someone would come in a, mental, in a metal ship with an interest in your gross industrial output and a desire to cure cancer is absolutely preposterous. That's such a culture-bound notion. It's like expecting them to arrive with a load of pizzas ready for delivery. <laughs> uh, the trick is going to be to recognize the extraterrestrial. The very notion alien means unfamiliar. So it, it's, it's not going to be like we think it is. The real task will be to recognize it. And uh, we have discovered, after only a thousand years, that uh, toxic metal-based technologies are fatal. And we have pushed our entire planet into planetary crisis by coming to this realization rather late in the game. If, if long-term survival is the name of the game for intelligent life in the universe, then the way we're doing it is not the way to do it. It's going to have to be non-polluting, biologically based, molecularly based, so forth and so on. And as you run down the list, the mushroom begins to look more and more like the real thing. And then, of course, the content of the, of the experience is so different from other psychedelics and so, it, so other-oriented that I, I am puzzled that we've been at this now nearly 30 years and we still don't have a consensus. I don't think... I don't know what it is. Is it that when you take the mushroom, you lose all ability to then operate in the world of straight judgments and understanding? Uh, it, it's very puzzling. But I think probably the biota of the Earth is riddled with extraterrestrial genes, if not organisms, and possibly intelligences. But they're not interested in your fetal tissue or uh, putting implants in you, or taking you up and slicing you up on, uh, in very large-scale surgical wards. I find all that paranoid and pathological. I can talk about that if you want, but it's not really our subject. Yeah. Among those who you talked about the DNA molecule, it's being extremely unusual. I'm not kidding. There's something about the mental polarization of the molecule. Can you talk about that?
Yeah. Um, there are different ways to look for extraterrestrials. One way is to build a vast radio telescope and search for a signal. Uh, the way I would do it, if I were in charge of things, is I would search the terrestrial ecosystem for anomalous molecules, molecules that have no near relatives or history of evolutionary development in terrestrial organisms. Well, it turns out you don't have to look far. It's psilocybin. Psilocybin is 4-phosphoryloxy NN dimethyltryptamine. It's the only 4-phosphorylated indole in nature. The only one. Okay, well, here you have a pentaxel group. It's a five-sided thing. And then you have a benzene molecule off it. And these molecules have numbered positions, one through six. And then you have a phosphorus group. It can attach at any one of those six positions. Attached in the four position, this is unheard of. It only occurs in this one case. Well, that's very odd. I mean, if we believe nature is a continuum of evolutionary adumbration, then to have suddenly out of nowhere a completely anomalous molecule sticking up suggests it may have come in from somewhere else. Yeah. Isn't psilocybin um, uh, very uh, similar in structure to serotonin? Well, it's similar. I mean, serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptamine. Uh, serotonin is ubiquitous in life on this planet, from flatworms to man. It's in every organism there is. Well, some. Yeah, the structure, yes, I mean, here's the thing. Serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptamine. Psilocybin is 4-phosphoryloxy and then dimethyltryptamine. What you've got then is uh, 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 4-NN dimethyltryptamine as opposed to 5-hydroxytryptamine. Yeah, these, these things are uh, a chemical family. Yeah.